Sisters Alliance. Thank you for being here on this beautiful October day. Welcome to the first in a series of potential gatherings of our Alliance. Our purpose is clear, to do everything in our power to stop an egregious wrong that some people are trying to perpetuate in this, our family-oriented neighborhood. Does anyone remember what was happening or what you were doing in 1961? Two New York stories filled the silver screen, West Side Story, along with Breakfast at Tiffany's. At home and on the TV screen, folks were tuning into Mr. Ed the Talking Horse, Bonanza, and Mayberry RFD, all in black and white. The U.S. had just launched its first man into space, and a gallon of gas was about 27 cents. Yes, it was a long time ago. No cell phones, no internet. 1961, ladies and gentlemen, was also the year that the zoning was established for our neighborhood. At that time, it was inconceivable to the framers of the zoning, working for the Department of City Planning, that anyone could have possibly imagined a mega tower. Any thoughts of a mega tower in a residential neighborhood would have been pure science fiction. After all, at that time, the city's largest structures, like the World Trade Tower, hadn't even been conceived. The tallest then were the Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building, commercial buildings taking up entire blocks, and they certainly were not placed in a firmly established residential area. The 1961 Zoning Resolution and the New York State Multiple Dwelling Law were enacted in tandem to encourage towers in the park and discover, discourage sliver buildings. By not having height limits, but allowing only mergers of commonly owned tax lots, developers could build very tall buildings with substantial open space. Or they could build squat buildings. The 1977 change to allow zoning lot mergers of tax lots that are not in common ownership undermined this structure leading to Donald Trump-type buildings. That was fine in 1977, when New York City was desperate to encourage development of any kind, and engineering limits provided some boundaries about what could be constructed. These two factors no longer apply, and it's time to protect the character of purely residential neighborhoods. for super tall residential towers, then it can do so, but only through a deliberate and thoughtful study of where these towers make sense and do not destroy the quality of life for the existing residents. Six months ago when I was confronted with the need to align myself with this fight, the imminent threat of a mega tower in our neighborhood, I felt a responsibility to do whatever I could to protect the neighborhood I have lived in for 20 years. I've raised twin children here, experienced the park life through the lifespan of two beloved dogs, have run literally thousands of marathon miles on these streets, and have a lot of friends in the area. I, like you, live here. I value the sun and the air that I breathe, and I appreciate the contextual differences amongst New York City's neighborhoods but the very idea of a mega tower potentially leaning in on us from right across the street, right there, is grotesque and wrong. Clearly not what the original zoning framers had in mind. We all need to do whatever we can do because when something is categorically wrong, you have no choice but to fight it or suffer the consequences. It's simply not good enough to say, oh, they're taking care of it, they've got it covered. Or even worse, there's nothing we can do. It's over. In addition to the question mark of who is the they, it's critical that in going forward, we all understand that they is we, and it's over is really we only just begun. We are not a community opposed to change or progress. We're not unreasonable. We're not impractical. But common sense tells you that there is no space for a 900-story mega tower on a tiny side street in New York City born out of a loophole in outdated zoning laws. Yeah. I don't remember much about 1961. It was the year I was born. <laughs> but there's one thing I do know. Close the loophole. 
keep the city healthy, save our neighborhood, say no to mega towers in residential neighborhoods. I hope you'll work with us, join us in whatever capacity you feel comfortable. Together we can make a difference. I thank you. The East River 50s Alliance will thank you. Your neighborhood will thank you. Whoa. Uh, it's now my pleasure to bring up Councilman Ben Kalos. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we're going to do a little chant if you'll join me. Stop super scrapers. 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 I'd like to first thank the other elected officials that I'm here with today our Senator Liz Kruger, our borough president represented by Ahmed Tagani. Partner on the east side, council member Dan Garodnik, who is represented here by staff today. And so we are so lucky to have the team that we have because when people say, as of right, they think that there's nothing we can do, but as a government, we get to change those rights. We get to change those laws, especially when we have laws that allow people to put up 900 foot buildings where we used to have affordable housing. We don't need more billionaire buildings, we need more affordable housing, and that's what we're here for today. We're here to protect tenants like Hengen Worth, who lives in an affordable unit that's rent regulated in one of these buildings that would sooner be torn down and replaced with housing for billionaires than anything affordable. And so today is a great day because it represents so much hard work. I'd like to recommend, recognize uh, Dieter Selig from Sutton Air Community as well as the rest of his board and Gail Haft who will be speaking. Uh, we also have the East River 50s Alliance which came together. Uh, we also have members of CB6 here today in their individual capacities, but CB6 has already spoken. They've passed a resolution calling for not only a moratorium, but for a rezoning of this area to protect us from tall buildings and residential yeah. neighborhoods. about six months, but in six months we've passed the resolution, we formed the East River 60, 50s Alliance, and our next step is to bring a private zoning change, which hopefully will come out soon, and we're doing this on our own, even though the city should be doing it, but we're going to do it, and so uh, if we haven't been to your building, if your board, if your building is not signed on to the East River 50s Alliance, I will come to you, I will come to you with the East River 50s Alliance, and we'll ask you to join. We will ask you to put your money where your mouth is and help us to protect this neighborhood. So thank you all for coming out. This is actually what government's supposed to look like. It's when each and every one of you participates that government actually works and then they don't have a choice but to listen, hear our voices, and change the laws so that the status quo of billionaire buildings, moving away affordable housing, stops. Stop super scrapers! Stop Super Scrapers! And I'd like to bring up Senator Liz Kruger. Well, aren't we all glad Ben Kalis is our city council member yeah. representing us? Yeah. Because Ben pretty much said it all. He talked about what the role of democracy is. It's when we get together and we organize to fight for our rights and the best interests of the city. He talked about what this community needs versus what it doesn't need. I'm delighted that we have representatives from Gail Brewer's office also, because remember the borough president's office has as part of its mission land use and planning, and she has a terrific urban planner who may be speaking next. And that's what this is about. This is about planning for our future in New York City. Just because someone figures out a loophole in old laws and decides what we need is a mega tower here in the Sutton area, doesn't mean it's good urban planning, doesn't mean it makes sense for this city, doesn't mean it's the right thing to do, nor that it's even desirable at this point where we're so desperate for preserving and building affordable housing to, as Ben said, build another billionaire tower. Now my district runs down to 10th Street up to 96th and in the 50s across to the west side. 
So I can tell you the experiences of other neighborhoods who have had these super towers built. And I can tell you that a developer for one of them even explained, what do you care? They're going to be empty. No one's going to live in them. They're just going to use it for investment purposes. So it's like it's not really being built anyway. Well, thank you. You're all laughing in horror because, of course, you know that's not true. Having a 900-story tower right there absolutely impacts everything and everyone in this community even if it's an empty building. And how absurd that the city of New York would think it was a good idea to build empty super skyscrapers. That makes no sense from an urban planning perspective. So I'm here to say, as a state legislator, you actually don't want Albany to determine land use in New York City. I can give you a million reasons why, but I am standing with my colleagues here in the city council and the borough president's office to do whatever I can do to help this community win this important fight. And by the way, you wouldn't just be winning it for your community. You're sending a message to the entire city that we need to take urban planning for the future of our city much more seriously than we have been. So thank you all. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so glad to see so many of you came out today. I know people have responsibilities, other things that they could be using their time for, but you all realize how important it is to be here with your neighbors and see and show that there is a united community behind the push to preserve the quality of this block. So congratulations to all of you for this next step in the process. My name is Ahmed Tagani. I'm the Community Development Officer and Urban Planner who's part of the Land Use Division for Gail Brewer's uh, Borough President's Office. Gail would have really loved to be here today. Nothing makes her happier, nothing makes her stronger than to be with the people that she's elected to serve. But she's asked me to come to just say a couple of things that we immediately thought as this proposal was brought to us. We knew from the get-go that this project was completely out of scale, out of scope, and not right for the neighborhood that they're looking to be placed in. This is a mid-block. This is a block. Thank you. This is a block where houses that give shape and feel to transportation flow, pedestrian flow on this in this part of the east side would be disrupted by such a huge, enormous building. Now, I, I don't want to repeat the words that we're talking about the 1961 zoning resolution, but it's clear, not only here, but in other parts of the city, that we're dealing with similar problems. Our office has been committed through a program that Gail brought in immediately upon entering office called the pre euler Initiative Program. For those buildings that do go through public review, we are getting the community to come in early with the developer, before applications are even submitted, to come up with a plan where they both can talk about what can be right for that area. What community facilities do we need? What kind of housing do we need? What should the flow for different kinds of traffic should be? We're trying to nail down even more community input on those public process reviews. But when it comes to as of right buildings, from time, time and time again we find that we come against huge obstacles. In this instance, it's when you had lot mergers, the sale of development rights coming together, and we had no indication early on. There was no trigger, there was no notification. Our office is adamant about trying to find a way to get notification, information about lot mergers so that communities have advanced warning as these deals are being made. We're looking into this and hopefully we'll have an update for you soon. Additionally, I'd like to also say that part of our mission is to make sure that you have the tools you need to build coalitions like this. So we've been doing trainings in communities. Uh, I want to, again, thank uh, Sun Area Community and the members of the, uh, the East 50s Alliance when they brought together, a, for, brought together everyone for a community training on zoning. We're happy to do that as often and as many times as possible. You need, to, you need and should have the terminology and the knowledge so that you can go out and fight for the things you want and we'll continue to do that. Finally, you cannot have a better group of local elected fighting by your side. Council member Ben Kalos, Council member Gorodnik, State, State Senator Kruger, other local elected plus the 50s Alliance, and uh, uh, Sutton Area Community. I am so glad to be here with you today. My information's on our website. If you ever need to contact and call, 
And then also, I also want to say thank you for the letters and the phone calls. It's always good to know where you stand. Please continue to contact us with any issue that you think is important. Thanks for this moment to speak. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. We yeah, have Gail Half from the uh, Sutton Area Community. Good morning. I'm Gail Half, Chair of the Government Committee of Sutton. Thank you all for attending the rally today. SAC is strongly opposed to this planned 900-foot residential tower for East 58th Street between 1st Avenue and Sutton Place. The time has come for a zoning change. Our district is zoned R10 as of right. But what about our rights? Aren't, aren't we entitled to quality of life with light, air, and minimal density? Traffic and city services will be affected. East 58th Street is a narrow one-way street. The 58th Street Water Tunnel Project will not be completed for two more years, which would create a serious traffic problem on 58th Street. The height and building of this proposed uh, plan does not conform to the uniqueness of our historic neighborhood, and it is totally incongruous. If this project goes ahead, it would be a green light to additional development everywhere on side streets on the east side that would further destabilize the entire Midtown and Upper East Side. The history of Sutton Place goes back to the 1700s, and our community has enjoyed the character and beauty of our wonderful neighborhood. We would like Sutton Place to remain a special residential area for generations to come. Mega towers have sprung up all over the city, especially on West 57th Street, 1st Avenue, and 2nd Avenue. The Macklow Building on 57th and Park is a thousand feet high. It is a total eyesore. It's time to put a stop to these excessive height buildings, especially in residential areas where they do not belong. Enough is enough. Yeah. back to 1916, after almost 100 years, it is outdated. Now is our time to protect our community and send a message to developers that they cannot come into residential communities like gangbusters and build mega towers that do not conform to the area. The city needs affordable housing. The Bauhaus Group wants to demolish four affordable housing buildings with rent control and rent stabilized tenants to build a 900-foot mega tower with apartments that will sell for millions of dollars to investors from abroad who will not live here but use the apartments as investment properties. The developer has the audacity to call his proposed tower Three Sutton Place in the middle of East 58th Street. If we all work together to fight this outrageous plan, we can set a precedent for neighborhoods throughout the city. Residential areas need reasonable zoning with height restrictions. We need to preserve our communities and the city we love. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mariana Vaidman Stone. I'm Council Member Garodnik, Senior Policy Advisor. Is it next week? Yeah. Um, Sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right, um, I'm Council Member Gorodnik, Senior Policy Advisor. The Council Member really wanted to be here today, but unfortunately he had a family conflict. He sends his regards, and he sent me to tell you that he stands with you and with his colleagues um, in believing that this area definitely needs a new zoning plan, one that's more in tune with the times, one that accommodates today's needs and to deals with today's challenges. I think we can all agree that the beauty of New York City is that it, the fact that it constantly evolves. But in managing its evolution, we have to preserve the things that make it beautiful, the things that make it livable, the things that make it home. Here, here. What we need is thoughtful, contextual development. We need to protect historic buildings. We need to protect the long-standing residents and small businesses of this neighborhood so that they're not overwhelmed by the economic pressures that come with uncontrolled development rights. We need a variety of housing. 
affordable to people at a variety of incomes, not the top 1% of the top 1% of the world. We need affordable housing. Our zoning should encourage that kind of development. And we need to protect our green spaces from the darkness thrown by these enormous buildings. As the city changes, and as technology allows these super tall towers that simply couldn't be built in the past, we need a sensible plan for the, where they're best suited. Clearly, sudden place, it, one of these would be wildly out of context. We're, we're proud of this community for putting in the time, the effort, the resources to create a thoughtful plan for the future of this area. You have our full support. So, uh, we had Fox News here this morning. CBS is on their way. I'm gonna ask a couple of you, if you don't mind, hanging around till they get here. But in the meantime, um, I'm gonna ask you to chant with me in hopes that we can chant loud enough for uh, the city planning to hear us and understand how important this issue is to us. So uh, we're on camera, and if you could join me. Stop super, super scraper, scraper, stop super 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 scraper, stop. Super scraper stop! 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 Super scraper stop!